Hey everybody, it's Elan from Inside Fighting, and once again I have a treat for you guys. It's Milos Dracolic, we're back. If you saw the Wing Chun video, you realize what a badass this guy is. And so I had to come back because when I was here, we talked about La Tosa Escrima, your style that you learned. I'm a guru in Filipino martial arts, I've been training Filipino martial arts my whole life. But just in 20 minutes of us training and talking and hanging out, I've already learned a ton of stuff. So this is going to be a treat this episode. <laughs> Inside, inside fighting, yeah. Dangerous, dangerous martial arts. Pow, pow. Ooh, ah. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So, uh, should I start how I started to? I learn? would like, okay, so he has the way he trained is very different than a lot of other people in Filipino martial arts because uh, you've got a good story. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I came from Kyokushin full contact style and wrestling. And then a friend of mine introduced me to Asian martial arts like Wing Chun and Eskrima and I started with the Wing Chun first and the stance was very weird so I skipped that and I started with Eskrima and just nowadays we would say that these guys were lunatics crazy guys because they were practicing not just with sticks, with sharp blades, machetes, whatever it was like iron bars, stainless steel sticks and it was always kind of an atmosphere of death kind of yeah, in the like air yeah. and I like that a lot because I was not always that smart like I am now but this was my approach so we always were practicing for kind of under real circumstances yes. real life circumstances and this is how I started you have a very good principle for generating power thank you uh, so why don't we actually just show the way you strike okay so usually uh, people hold it please this way yes, yes. people see so every normal person will hit like this, just chamber up and then hit through. Yeah. And this is hard, okay? Yeah. But we don't have time, okay? Then you have a lot of Filipino martial arts system, they go through and then they go from this side, yeah. see? And this is powerful too, but in La Tulsa Escrima, we don't want to waste time. I want to be ready here, number two. You see, I want to be ready here, and you see? It is very forceful. Right? Oh yeah, that, that'll take a person out even with Rotan, which I always say Rotan is not enough to take yeah. a person out that yeah. way if they hit me in the head. So it is that everything we deliver has to come. So here is just to show that still this is powerful. When I have my stick here, I have to deliver it from my legs. And to be ready again oh, to engage. Okay? Yeah. So the weapon has always, even after I have I've made a strike, has to stay in front of my body. Yeah, I love that. Because I noticed that that was a main principle when we were playing around that he had covered with me many times. Go to Paris, you know, the stick is yep. well, everywhere, right? It's yeah. like it's pretty, it's everywhere. Yep. And even when we train our strikes, we do come through. We generate a lot of power like this. Yep. One of the first things that I learned in Illustrissimo, which was a big principle, was that the stick crosses, it can't cross too far that you lose your angle. It has to stay in range. And you do that perfectly. You generate a ton of power. It looks like you're coming through, but the stick just stays right here, right in your face. Yes. And it's, you know it's interesting because your Wing Chun and your Filipino martial arts are very similar principle-wise. It's the same idea of stickiness. It's like the stick generates power. It comes forward, short power, but it's always right there, right in your face, ready to hit you. Yes, we can. I can show you this on the punch it pad too, if you, if you want. Sure. So the striking power. And yet it's very similar and it has to do a lot of the position of our legs because um, you see a lot of Filipino martial arts and I don't say that they're wrong or weak, whatever it is, it's their system and we practice the way we do. But for us it's very important that our toes always, it doesn't matter how we move, they face to the front. Yeah. Okay? So even if I have to move around, my toes are facing you. I never try to stand like this. Yeah. Or like this, my toes are facing you, and my back knee always has to give as much pressure to the front as I can have. So basically, if you stand on my lower leg, I have to be able to hold you like this. You just did this on me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this is and this is something. This is one of the things what creates power, and that we are always. You named it in the other video so so nicely. Uh, so I, I picked it up from you you have to keep your structure even after your strike. So a lot of people, they strike, boom, mm -hmm. and then here they get loose. Yes. But we were taught to just boom, punch and keep it here and go from there all the time. I was told from my father, which I dedicate everything I have now, nowadays for fighting spirit to my father because this is what I learned from him. And he told me all the time, don't practice having a 
big upper arm. You should always have a strong lower arm, forearm. Yes. And this is why I, when I practice, I keep my stick here to create as much force and to train as much for my lower arm. But if I have to fight, I do this because this is part of the weapon too. Yes, it's a nice, it's a nice tool to have. Yes, and yes. So quick. if I would have to fight, I would always be like here. But for my practice, when I practice, I do this here okay. just to train as much or strengthen as much my arm as I can. What was really nice is the. I would love for you to show a demo with the the broadsword there, the long sword. Is okay, the long good. Sword, broad sword, what is it it's it's a, a two and a half. No, it's a two hander. You call it a two. -hander. They say one hander sword, a one and a half hander sword, and then a two hander sword. Okay. Do you want to grab it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just to give an impression of everyone. Woo! And it's sharp. Yes, it is. It's a, a is real it is. sharpened sword. Yes. So this is one thing I always do. Of course, I practice with my uh, blunt weapons like sticks, but when I practice with blades, I always practice with sharp blades. And everyone in Germany knows me for that. If you want to cut off someone's head, like in Highlander, yes, it's a great sword for yeah. that. <laughs> okay, so, you see, I can hold it with both hands, and even when I do it with both hands, because the weight of the weapon is always at the tip, okay? So this is just to have a bigger weight here, it's just to equal it out, but the weight of the weapon is always in the tip. So whenever you swing a blade, you see, it doesn't matter what kind of weapon it is, can be an ax, the biggest weight is always here. So when I'm standing stiff like here, and I have, you see how my body just have to turn around? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what it is, you see, now I'm always exposed, okay? Now the theory in La Tosa Screamer is, we equal everything out with our footwork, okay? So what does it mean? You see, my weapon always stands in the end in front of my body, and I can do the same thing. Okay, you wanna give it a try? <laughs> I'll try. It's, it's crazy how... Uh, it's just a feeling. Try to equal it out. I just and you move the every strike. You move every strike to keep... See, I'm over... Yes. I'm over committing sometimes. Yeah. But... You feel better now? Yes. When you train, especially... What's well, interesting is one hand... Oh, that's heavy. But you, you, people don't see the weight until they use it. <laughs> but like, you, you're very good at keeping it right in front of you. See, my instinct, because of the weight, is to come to here. Really, I should come just to here, where it's still pointing yes. right at my... Right here. Yes. Right here. Right here. We can do one thing. I'm gonna grab quickly my Spartan sword. Yeah. Which is heavy too. Okay. Okay. There can only be one. Guys, it's gonna get really bad in here with two live swords and uh, <laughs> someone like Milos, kill me. Well, okay. That's also a live blade. Great. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> just to show you something. Okay? Uh -huh. You just make it a strike what everyone would do with this overcommitment. Okay? okay? Just, but please go to the target. Okay. okay. Please go to the target. You, no, I'm, it's not the target. It's, it's a live blade. It's missing, it's missing. It, no, yes, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Closer, closer, closer. Okay. Yeah. Yes, of course. And again, let's go. Go with that, okay? Because someone might do this, right? Yes. And because my weapon is heavy too, but it's not heavy as yours, that's the uh, problem. Uh -huh. That's the problem. Yes. Okay? So you have to move your legs, do the same attack. You have to move your legs to keep the weapon in front of your body. Oh, you're talking about now keep yes. it in front. Yes, okay. Keep it in front. You, you see the difference? Yes, now I need to Yes, you back. see? And me, using my Spartan sword, I have to do the same. If I do, if you come and I skip, I do this, you see, I'm done. Yes, especially if I'm keeping my sword in yes. line with you. That's so slight over commitment. Everything I do here, you come in, please, boom. You see, I have to. Mm-hmm. Okay, and only this gives me an opportunity, or you, so to maintain not just the direction, but the force in front of your body where your weapon belongs. And this is interesting because it's a shorter blade, so I have the advantage technically, but if you overcommit, you know what I mean? Like you said, if I'm here right away, this kind of screws up everything for you because you went too far. But yeah. if, you keep, if you have a blade like that and you just wind it up with me, there's no way I'm getting it. I don't have the space. Yeah. It's already cutting me down here. Yeah. So it's like I, I don't even I don't even know how I would get close because I'm, I'm just trying to protect yeah. my body, trying to slide in, but it would be very hard. 
You see? Yeah. My blade is always facing towards you. The tip yeah. of the weapon is always facing towards you. It's never facing in another direction. Because to bring the tip back here needs time. The longer the weapon, the more time it needs. Okay? So even you see with even with this kind of blade, it's heavy too. Yes. So just imagine you're practicing with this for one year. Yeah, my forearms are already feeling this. It's nice. It's okay. actually a great tool to train with. A nice heavy. Yes. I told you I train with Kamagog because it's yep. heavier. But this is even heavier than Kamagog. And what's nice here is you have to keep blade alignment in your strikes. We were talking about one of the first things in Dustin Paris when I switched to Illustrissimo. One of the first problems I had was, I don't, can I can I show this? I'm of course. Stick. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Give me one second. I'll be back. So. <laughs> It's just interesting because you won't have this problem in Let's Dust Sex Prima. I'll just hold it here. Yep, okay, thank you. So, in Dust Paris, we learn uh, specific strikes. We call them Watique, we call them Palito, Abanico. Right now, if you look, this is very cool. And Dust in Paris is a very enclosed style where you're here like this, trying to generate power. But then when I went to this, and I pick this up and I try and do that, you can't. So every strike you have to be aware of. If I'm doing a Watik or a Balitok, my Balitok can't be flat. It has to be sharp. My Watik can't be flat unless I'm cutting with the edge like this. It changes everything. La Tosa Escrima from day one is treating the stick like the blade, like the long sword. That's why you're able to just jump from yeah. everything. Yeah, and this is one of the main purposes Remas Reynaldoza told us. His system is a system of transitioning the idea to any kind of weapon. So this is why we practice always like this. And for empty hand, is there a transition to empty hand? Same thing, same thing. Can we see a little bit of it? Of course, okay. of course. Let's put these bad boys away, I survived guys. <laughs> there will be another episode of Inside Fighting. So there's a, a really, really amazing concept here for empty hand striking that, that is derived from the, the stick fighting yes. system and the whole approach. You were just showing me a little bit of it. Can you cover that philosophy right there? Yes, of course. So in La Tosa Escrima, we say, we don't try to reach out for the opponent. We always strike into our box. What we try to do is always defend our box. And our box is my body is like the real wall of my house, of the box. And my box is like my arms, 75% just stretched here. This is my box. So what everything I do, I strike into my box. If I have, if I want to reach you, I just push my box forward. So I don't care. So let's, let's do a little bit of movement. Yes. So if I start, yeah, you're just, so if I, yeah, and then if I try, yeah, you're just going to move it here. Is it? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> It's hard to get through. Yes, because you see, I strike into my box. So whatever you want to do, you have to cross my arms, right? Yeah. So you see, do I have to pay attention on your attacks? No, you just you just know that something's coming. Yes. And it doesn't matter kind of where. And it's, it's even hard for me to come back because... Yeah, it's interesting. It's very simple. Now, obviously, if someone throws a hard hook, you're, you're yeah. kind of moving in tight. And... Throw a hard hook. Yeah, I mean, but, but yeah. you see where my arm is? It's already there. Same, same thing as the. Yes, yes, because what I don't do is I don't do this. What I do, I do. Boom. That would hit me no matter what. There's no way for me to stop. Yeah. Or if you come with this, I'll boom. Yeah. But you see, my box, I just push my box forward. I hit into my box and I push my box forward. So, it, you know, we have similar movements, and Filipino martial arts, but the subtle differences is what makes. Because in Dosia Paris, we generate. A lot of heat trying to generate it. See yeah. that smack power? Yeah. So we can come in. So the boom. Yes. You're in the process going boom. It's yeah. already here. There's yes. no space. So if you can see, I'm creating a little bit of space. So yeah. I can generate, try to generate more yeah. force. You're just driving in yes. right away. Yeah. You see how, how early you get me? Yeah. Here I can take you down. Yeah. I can take you down. Yeah. I can do anything. I can come for an overload. Yeah. You, guillotine. Everything yeah. comes because you close the gap. Yeah. I like that. And just try, do the same thing, and try to do some follow-up, just striking movements, okay? Just so we're, you're going to strike, yeah. and I go here and I hit. Yes, yes. Yeah. you see how fast it goes? Yeah. Yes. It's my instinct to grapple, always. Of course, of course. <laughs> and now compared to the things you did before, you do the same, I do the same attack. Yeah, yeah it's, it's more, you're still in a fighting match here. You see? Yeah. Yeah. And that is how Dustin Paris does it. It's almost, it's almost a little bit like boxing. 
where we try and get. But if, if you keep going, it's very hard. We're going to start. It's interesting. It's so simple. Yeah. And you see, I always try what I was talking about, delivering force from my legs. Because you see, you see here, I can hold my arm here, and it looks like, oh, he needs to create a chamber to create force, right? Yeah. But when you practice it the right way, we can do this with a pad. So, my arm is here. Is it a bit higher, please? Yes. My arm is here. Yeah. And just imagine my arm from here. Pow! Yeah, going for me. And no I can pad, do that would be. Yeah, that sucks. And this is what comes in. And it's so short. Yes, it's so short. There's no. Yes. Your shoulder, it's not, I don't know if your shoulders are up. It's that same thing as before. But you're like a little ball. I'm doing this. Yeah, the left leg. Yes, I do this. The badass. Yes, <laughs> I do this. You see, and this is why, for even from here, ooh. and this is if we take it down, please. If we start, no, no, take it down. If we start to engage, boom. Yeah. This comes here, and you see. Yeah, I wouldn't want to get so, by that. And I, I still keep my arm here. I don't chamber it back. I notice that. What I do, you. I push my box forward. Yes. And this is like a chain of a tank, like moving in, moving in, moving in, moving in. I love this because I teach this as a concept that is super necessary. You look at uh, most boxers, even pro boxers, best yeah. boxers in the world. What is boxing? Boxing is I throw a hook and I bring it back into the yeah. tank. I throw my jab and I bring yeah. it back into the tank. The, I always like fighting work. You throw the hook and now it just keeps moving. Yes. It keeps moving, it keeps moving. My elbow's here, I'm just driving in. I'm hitting here, I'm hitting here. I don't need to pull it away. And it's so nice. You have a, but your approach. When I'm doing it, I'm a little bit loose and relaxed. I'm pretty with it. You're just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's scary. You feel it more. And when you hit, it, my whole body vibrates. Yeah. Similar to the Wing Chun. Yeah. I love this. And I can show you. Please don't move. Just for the camera. Okay. Don't move. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I moved a little bit because I got scared. <laughs> yeah. But you see, this is just the speed. And you felt before when I was striking, I can hold the speed even when I strike hard. Yeah. And this is, you have to try like, boom, keep it here, boom, keep it here, boom, keep it here. And you see my hand, I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing this. I'm boom, because this has to be ready to be the next one. That's interesting. So, yeah, I'm so trained to do traditional striking. Yeah. That even here, like, boom, a lot of people love to do this. Me too, yeah. Okay? And even this. So yours is, everything is coming through with this. Yes. It's, it's just right here. So yes. Never, so if you hold it, if I do the hammer fist, see when I'm here. Yeah. I'm like. <laughs> yeah. Even if I even if I were to check. Yeah. Yeah. It's still. Do you feel it? I feel it. It drove me down. Okay. And the next immediately comes in. It's not that I have to here to just open up. Just keep it close as. Okay. Yeah, it's still coming through, and it's coming through behind my ear, which would. You suck. See? I don't know if you guys can see that. Maybe on this. Yeah. Side. Yeah, it comes you right see, it's, a, it's an immediate movement. I don't do. Yeah, this gives me time to counter. Of course, back. because you're not you're not stupid. You're trained. You're yeah. you're smart. Yeah, if you give me space, even if you hit and move back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yes. hit here. Uh, but if you do it the way you, do, I don't have time. And you see, I'm still look. My whole position is always towards you. This is one of my biggest forces. Turn the money. Also, when you do it your way, okay. So when when you do it the the, the wrong way or the yeah. more comfortable, do it. Notice how my body stays facing you. Yeah. When you do it your way, my body turns away for some reason. It's like you're carrying me to look that way. Yeah. What's happening there? How's that? And why can't I move your arm? Because What's going on here, people? <laughs> so this is the next thing Grandmaster Reynald Toza was teaching us. And this is a very annoying, but a very, very good practice to strengthen your structure. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stand here. I'm going to do some strikes, OK? okay. And what you try to do, just push me a little bit sideways or to the front and to the back or just pull a little bit on my hips. Yeah. Okay, so I would show you what in general happens to people. Okay. okay? Just when they start to strike. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Good. And I'm hitting you hard. Yeah. Nothing is really moving. You're, you're still staying like a block. Even if you move forward, you're moving forward like a block. You see? And but I don't have to stop punching. Yeah. And this is what you feel like this solid structure moving in. Because this is when you were just trying to push my arm away. Yeah. 
this is it. You're already winning here. I can already feel it because I'm not here. Like, yes, now we're a little more even. <laughs> but just immediately, you already have a huge advantage yeah. if I'm not here right away. Yeah. And you see, I can. I only need this little space to adjust. You know what it feels like also when you're standing? It's kind of like this. It almost feels like you're holding knives. Yeah. It feels like this is already going to stab me in the face, this other armor. And yeah. I'm like, oh man, I yeah. see a knife in the hand. Yeah, and this is, and this is, we don't want to lift our elbow too much. The elbow is hanging and it delivers kind of a ballistic movement, like, mmm, yeah, I call it a baseball punch. Yeah. I, I got hit by one of those ones. Yeah. I told the guy, you don't know how to punch, and I got caught in sparring. Just threw it like, like a baseball. And I was like, oh man, I was shocked. I can tell you one thing. Grandmaster Reno Atosa, being a decent man of a decent age before he passed away, in 2020, he had a seminar in Germany, in my school. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, even then, he was having a stronger punch than I did. Wow. So, Grandmaster Reno Atosa was a legit grandmaster in everything. Well, I mean, I can feel just what you're doing to me. And again, I always say this, martial arts has to be felt to be understood. You can't, you know, you watch the video, but if you're in Florida, South Florida, and you don't come to this school, you're a maniac, and I hate you. Thank you definitely gotta come train here to me. Thank you for today. Great. Thank you, guys. Lucas Channel.